Well, thank you again for doing this this morning, Amy. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks uh, for having having me do it. It's a good tool. It's useful. All right. Um, well, to start off, I guess, can you tell us a little bit about your topic and how you decided upon it? Sure. So my topic is the use of educational technology with special education students. And um, the way I decided upon it is um, that I see a lot of kind of quick fixes being looked for and and asked for in the field of special ed. Um, People often think that, you know, having, it's not completely dissimilar from from general education where they think an iPad for every student or a Chromebook for every student is going to solve a million problems. And and particularly with special ed kids, this seems to be a, a quick solution. So I was interested in finding out more about how those things are really being used and and whether or not they're helping with some of the behavioral issues as well as the learning um, that we would hope to see. Okay. Um, Once you decided upon this topic, how did you go about starting your literature review? So um, using the research tools that we talked about in class when we took the trip to the library and Um, We were able to access all of the different databases, um, really helped, you know, you kind of walked us through lots and lots of different places to search. Um, So I began that way, you know, with Eric, with um, Ed uh, uh, Lit Tech, it changed its name or something, Ed Tech Lit or something, Um, Google Scholar, and and then just lots and lots of... um, looking around online and in different library databases. Okay. Once you got all of that together, how did you start the process of actually putting it together into text to into prose? That's been the most challenging aspect of this for me. Um, it's such a different type of writing uh, than any other type of writing that I had done in the past. And I considered myself to be someone who is fairly comfortable as a writer, um, but but really adhering to APA format while still making sense to a reader while, you know, still uh, remaining concise. Those things were the biggest challenges. So I started off, as you know, just kind of throwing a lot of stuff out there and then through the refining process back and forth with you, I was able to get a better sense of how to do this type of writing more effectively. Okay. Now that you're in in the midst of the process, you're probably a few weeks away from actually starting the study. Um, What's something that you wish you had known up front that you think would have helped you? Uh, I guess just realizing that even though you have an idea in your mind about something you're curious about, that the way that that translates into this type of process and study may look so different that you don't feel the same connection to it. So I think I would have liked to have taken a little bit more time to reflect on um, maybe what this thesis process looks like when it's all finished as opposed to just being passionate and excited about my topic because even though you need that passion you also need to realize there is a little bit of a leap between what you're excited about and how you need to have it come across in an academic environment okay um for folks that were just starting or say in the first four or five classes of of 689 um, you know, before they actually started putting pen to paper for their literature review, what types of things might you suggest to them in terms of advice? I think actually reading uh, through some completed work is very, very helpful because it gives you a sense of the pacing and the style and the formatting. Um, either reading, um, you know, some of those completed thesis uh, papers that you had put up um, or just literature reviews themselves. You know, I had not done a lot of that type of reading in my past or career. Um, So I think if I had kind of marinated myself in that world a little bit more prior to beginning the writing process, I wouldn't have been 
as overloaded or intimidated. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say about either the literature review or your experience throughout the process uh, thus far that you think might be useful for future students? Um, I think the most important thing is to just um, two things. One thing is to hold on to your vision because even if it seems like you don't know what you're talking about anymore and you don't know if there's anything to find, um, you know, if there is something in you that really drove you to pick this topic, then you must have some real innate connection to it. So hold on to that and get help in refining it and figuring out how to get it across. And then the second thing would be just to have patience because it's very easy to get panic stricken and lose momentum that way. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amy. It's, uh, I've, it's been a pleasure chatting, and I'm sure this will be useful for future students. Great. Thank you so much.